When a woodworker first gets started with hand tools, one of the things that I think is the most intimidating is sawing. What I want to do, and if you go back to our first semester toolkit, you see there really are not that many tools. The only specialty tool in there is a router plane. The reason for that is I want to teach good sawing so that you're joining together pieces straight from the saw. You know, maybe you have to come in and clean up the tiniest little bit with a chisel, but for the most part, your joints fit right off the saw. And that comes from accurate sawing. The face can be canted either forward or backward. If you cant it forward, it's what's known as positive rake. Canting it backwards is negative rake, or sometimes referred to as relaxed rake. The rake determines how smoothly the tooth moves through the cut. Um, as you relax the rake, it, the, set is gonna, the saw is gonna slide a lot easier, and it kind of facilitates more of a slicing action to the wood rather than the chopping action. A ripped tooth generally has zero degrees of rake. In other words, it's a perfectly 90 degree tooth. This is the same way that a saw cuts. And in fact, if you were to pick up a handful of rip-sawn dust off the floor, you can actually feel it a little bit differently. Um, it, it has a little bit more bulk to it than cross-cut severed fibers because it is just like a chisel and chipping the wood away, just like that. The other thing to keep in mind is that we have a straight line from shoulder all the way down to your hand to your saw plate that will allow you to keep the saw cutting straight. You can saw standing up. It's actually quite comfortable to do it this way. You'll want to flip the board around. And work the opposite face. This keeps your cut on the line all the way across the board. You'll even hear this kind of rattle motion as it comes up. That's an indication that my body is somehow out of square. I am trying to pull the saw blade out at such an angle and it's causing the whole thing to vibrate. When this happens, it's simply a matter of readjusting your body to make sure, again, that the saw is moving in line. You're not trying to force it off your line. It's good, but if you notice, my arm is actually at an angle here. If I lean over a little bit, now it's 90 degrees straight up and down. This is the angle you want to focus on when you're cutting at the bench. If the saw is sharp, the saw is straight, it will cut much faster than you can make it cut. So just deep breaths, Take your time to get it established, square and straight, then get out of the way and let it go. We look for that feathered edge. It's the same thing I'm doing here with the chisel. Just waiting for that edge to pop up. So I realize you might be a little tired after all that ripping exercise and then building this bench, but you gotta try the thing out. Grab yourself another board, mark some lines, and practice a little bit more. Pull it up here on top of the bench and use the ripping notch. Thank <laughs> you. 